We're with uh, Paul Foster, Senior Director of Creative Content at Getty Images, uh, talking about some of the trends in, um, in, in photography and video, um, where is content coming from, and, um, and, and some of the convergence and difference between, uh, between, between the various sources of, uh, of content. Good to see you here. Hi. Um, so let's start with, um, with, with the, the type of content, the type of subjects and style you're, you're, you're allowing you're, you're, to be submitted at the moment. Can you, can you give us a bit of an idea of the latest trends? On that song video, yeah. That, uh, let's start with stills. Yeah, okay. Well, um, as, as, as you probably know, uh, we've been sourcing uh, imagery and video from, from a range of very different sources, say, in the last three to four years than mm. perhaps traditionally uh, image libraries uh, would have done in the past. In the past we would have probably exclusively relied on um, professional photographers and video makers, um, movie houses and, and uh, production houses. Um, and now of course we've opened out uh, our relationship with Flickus and we've also got a relationship with iStock Photo. So you see a very, uh, in addition to the image partners and professional agencies and professional um, video makers and photographers we see um, uh, a range of content from uh, what we would call maybe we'd call the crowd or we would call crowdsourced material so with Flickr very exciting because that is a sort of photo sharing site so the imagery that's placed there is done so by for a motive of uh, wanting to um, share imagery so it's it's not it wasn't a site that was designed to be a stock library so therefore you get much more spontaneous and very different kind of imagery not very much more authentic imagery than you would say from a set up stock shoot and so with iStock Photo as well a community that was sort of formed uh, out of um, non-professional uh, photographers in the beginning so you see a huge range of talent there globally and uh, I'm, I'm, I sort of joined Can this week after last week being in Berlin at the iStockalypse, which was a fascinating uh, experience where we worked with the iStock photographers and video makers uh, and um, do portfolio reviews, do a lot of shoots and, and get a lot of regional content from, from Berlin. And, and iStockalypse, I, I, I saw that as well, that it's, it's, an, uh, it's open to the public now? Uh, it's not open to the public, it's open, we had open tickets for non iStock members so f we opened it out uh, to Flickr members so f uh, Flickr contributors to get the images were also able to to come okay all right and and do you look with different eyes and different uh, uh, expectations towards the different sources you have so you have the the iStock community the Flickr community yeah. which is generally not not even intended to to, to be monetized when yeah. it's first on there is there a different rule book when you look at those different collections I don't think so I think the way that our editors uh, work uh, when they're curating uh, or, or act actively kind of guiding shoots is it's rule number one is that the, the image or the video clip has got to communicate a, a concept, a saleable concept that's going to be relevant for some uh, for a pro professional creative or communicator who, you know, at the end of the day is buying clips and stills from us um, to use in their communication. So um, we're, we're looking at, you know, concepts that have never really gone away, things like connection, communication, togetherness, teamwork, cooperation, and you can find those concepts are just done with a different treatment and tend to be done with a different style from, say, a flick of, flick of contributor to a professional agency or a high stock contributor. Okay, okay. And um, uh, video, just, just touching briefly on that. Um, it has it is the sourcing of that changing or has it changed as rapidly as as it as it has for stills and clearly we've seen we've seen stills being much more community generated is that something you're now also seeing for the video yeah well particularly if you look at um, if you look at iStock uh, video which is only six years old I think this year um, I mean that went from a standing start to uh, now a sort of thriving part of the business and that's again has been driven by changes in technology so even the camera that you're filming me on now uh, you know we didn't have that ability to use still cameras to shoot video so um, the technology changes means that more it's easier the entry level if you like in terms of cost and the equipment that you need to make a broadcast quality clip 
uh, is is much more attainable by by a lot of people. So we're seeing, you know, particularly the uh, eye stock uh, photographers. A lot of those have started to move into video, um, and you've seen uh, not so much with um, with Flickr, but with sites like Vimeo. Um, my team in particular have found that a very very fruitful source of new um, video talent. And these people can can ha maybe have a background as a professional filmmaker or they could be people that are largely self-taught and uh, are you saying you're you're finding some new contributors now through through Vimeo for example yeah we certainly recruited a lot of um, uh, you know awesome filmmakers from around the world um, via via Vimeo so our uh, our team sort of go in there and have a look and uh, contact those videographers Great. And, and with video, are you seeing that uh, something that happened with, with still photography, with cameras getting better, people making more pictures, quality rose, rose yeah. quite quickly. Yeah. Is that something we're in the middle of in, in video now as well? Do you, do you see that? So. I mean, I do think there is a level of complexity around video uh, that doesn't exist with, with stills. Largely speaking, if you imagine a still, once, once it's taken, it exists in a format more or less with some tweaking and a little bit of work but m in the main particularly say a flicker snapshot of a real family that that exists in a format that can be used straight away by um, an ad agency uh, or des a designer or a web designer whatever um, whereas video because of it the, because it's time based obviously it needs to be clipped so you could have an extremely usable and very conceptual piece of video but until that is sort of clipped into a piece uh, that, that that's um, it's it's not in usual form so that so that that is does add a layer of um, a level of complexity however uh, as I said the technology means that people um, you know the steady cams that it's easy to get um, tracking shots you can get tripods and things that are that are that allow you to do um, panning shots that are that are much easier for people to get hold of so yeah that the, the we're seeing that rise of it of uh, ability and we're seeing more and more um, uh, we're seeing more and more clips being made that are, that are usable and commercially viable all right what um, just kind of concluding what what kind of tips would you give you know, budding video makers in this case because we are, we're, we're a little bit more at the at, well not at the beginning but uh -huh. not as far developed perhaps uh -huh. as photography um, if they were to be discovered on Vimeo yeah. or, or elsewhere um, I think it's uh, it's again it's the same it's it's think conceptually it's always think about the end customer how are they going to be using your video clip um, you know is it travel documentary is it an establishing shot um, you'll need to lead it you know you need to have an, a nice lead in and lead out generally speaking we talk about clips the optimum clip length being about 20 seconds um, and uh, the um, I'll just maybe cut. So, the clip tip need is, is 20 seconds, but yeah, again, it's the it's the conceptual component. Who's going to be using it? Why would they use it? In fact, the average length of clip that's actually used by our customers tends to be two seconds, right. but they need that sort of 20 second optimum length to uh, to be able to find their perfect moment. But that perfect moment is operating really r very much like a still. It needs to communicate quickly. Uh, a, a, an idea or a concept or an emotion. All right. So uh, finally, uh, uh, clearly, the, 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 the sourcing of content is, is, is in the hands of one team. It's a unified team now looking at kind of all channels coming in. Is, is that something that, that will continue to be the case? Is that working for you? Well, we continue to integrate the creative teams. The, the uh, iStock, uh, iStock community is still... Um, uh, edited and inspected by their team of inspectors and uh, inspector squad leads, so that is still a different team than uh, than a Getty Images. But we're working much more closely together. Our creative research team has just expanded to have someone dedicated to uh, content development at iStock, um, and uh, our creative teams, our art directors and editors, were at the iStock Ellipse uh, last week in Berlin, as they were the, the previous uh, two. Um, so yeah, we're working to spread as much of the commercial knowledge and the know-how that exists within both teams to share the share best practices. All right. Well, thanks for that, Paul. It was very informative and have a good uh, rest of Cannes. <laughs>